How much fun was it to return to this? Are you talking to me? I might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start, isn't it? Um, it was. It it was. It was good to go back to the family, and by that I mean the crew and the cast, uh, and and then the, we had the new auditions of the of God over there. <laughs> the man with the good hair, we call him. Yeah, <laughs> Bible hair. Um, but um, so it was good. But then it, you hit the ground running. You, the, you know, we started working. Um, well, we, we, you know, before we started shooting, we started working, reworking the scripts. You know, working the dialogue, working about talking about character, um, and and season arc and how we, you know, what we want to play and how we do it and so on. So it was it was immediately exhausting. And then you've got a long, long way to go. But it's a lot of fun. In season one, I guess you're all th you're thrown together, and you have to. We have to believe in you as a family. So you had the license of being able to improvise. Was it a very different experience this time round? Was there still that license to develop your characters and improvise in some scenes? Yeah, it was. It was kind of the format that we used, right? It was, you know, how, what 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 is the situation that you're in, and how would your character um, operate within that? Um, so it became one because because we knew the people that we were, you know, more than we did um, in, initially in the, in the first season. We kind of knew what what they would do, and it was a question of coming up with f stuff that's fun for you guys to um, watch. But that's the that's the beauty of television. In that, if you've made a series <clears throat> and you go on to make a second series with characters that you love, it gives you the opportunity in the script and also in the playing of it to dig deeper into those characters and you know what works and the things that you're less interested in, you can develop them much more. And that, that's the exciting thing about being given the opportunity to do a second series with characters that you love already. We are in a period of amazing television drama with big names being drawn to it. What do you think, what, what would you put that down to guys? Money. <laughs> as simple as? I, th I think, I think we're, we're able to work on a bigger canvas now on television than, than we used to be able to. And so you have more time to think about it. You have more time to prep it. You know, you've got the opportunity to work with a bigger cast, more experienced cast, as well as newer cast, and go to amazing places like, like Canada. You know, and Canada, as you've seen, and I hope you agree, is, is a really beautiful and exciting character in the piece. And a long time ago you wouldn't have been able to do that and now we can we can think on a big scale both visually and narratively and emotionally so both genevieve and abigail in in season two that does so we already see that your character is developing your strength this grows from evolves can you tell us about your character and how you see them how they've changed we saw you as a young girl finding love you know going through trauma all that in the first season how has she changed in this one i think at the beginning of the second season, she is in shock completely and very traumatized. And I think has to get away from these two for a bit. <laughs> um, and she does that and she finds solace in the Nickel family who welcome her in and are really kind to her. And they live on this beautiful colony and everything seems peaceful and idyllic. And I think that gives Anna the time to decide what she really wants and who she is and try to understand her, who her parents are. Um, <laughs> and Good luck with that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite there yet. But um, yeah, I think definitely throughout the whole season, it's about her trying to find her way back to them, I think. And for you, Genevieve? Uh, I, I think... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think we started series one with a very different Angela. Uh, you know, maybe the idea of what she wanted to be or what she hoped they could be, what they would be as a family. And I think what happened at the end of season series season one just kind of obliterates any thought of that anymore. And I think where we meet them at the beginning of that, at, on the top of that mountain is, you know, that's evident. They are just a little shattered family, and um, little. <laughs> but there, there's only three of them now. You know, they're little. Little in size. <laughs> oh, like like size. Size. <laughs> Yeah, like um, so. You know, I, I think she, 
desperately wants to hold on to something, but she doesn't know what to hold on to. She doesn't know. So she's got no ground. She's got nothing. So Elizabeth comes along, and she holds on to Elizabeth like... She's lost her daughter. She's feckin' tried to kill her husband. That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at this stage, she hasn't got much, has she? <laughs> Bless that. So, John, you're, you, we haven't seen you in your element yet, but you, what was the appeal for you for joining this madness? <laughs> <laughs> Apart uh, from the fact that you two are mates. Money. <laughs> no, uh. Money seems to be the answer to everything. <laughs> No, it was, they paid you well, right? It was everything that was involved. It was everything. It was uh, Rowan. It was Tim, primarily Tim, because Tim and I never, have never acted directly at no. each other. Yeah, we've always, so that, we've always yeah, been and we sort of, we sort of, we hadn't, we started out together, and we met each other in, in 1984. Yeah, yeah, and we never acted together, and um, and I knew of the series, and I knew of the pedigree of the series, and then everybody involved, and also the the character, the piece. The location, and that was it. I was, I was off on an, an adventure. You know, it was, it was fantastic. So, you, without any spoilers, can you tell us a bit about the Nicole family? Yeah, they're they're uh, the community. It's a colony. They're sort of a more relaxed version of the Amish. Uh, but we, we changed. I don't, I don't know what I can say. You well, can I'm going to say. That. I can say that. <laughs> um, Put your I can, hand up, I can say my name as well. <laughs> can I? Um, it's allowed. Yeah. <laughs> but we couldn't call them. They're sort of based loosely on. Uh, it's a combination of certain combination kinds of, of, of certain kind of Anabaptists uh, and um, pacifists. So it was an interesting idea to sort of bookend kind of um, the the kind of madness and, uh, and fractured quality of, of this family to the apparent uh, serenity of pacifist community and to push them against each other. But then all isn't what it seems, you know, and um, my character has one or two things going on as well. Um, but also um, Anna is welcomed into this community, which is a very strong patriarchal community, which Tim kept pointing out. <laughs> I, did, lot, I did bring it up. True. But it's very, well, it was very true. So it's a very strong patriarch, patriarchal system. And Anna believes she's safe. And the rest is history. So, uh, so do I, by the way. I believe I'm safe. <laughs> but, you know, Until he, he Mr. comes Roth along. Comes along. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alison, um, did you have, how much light? I mean, after season one, you, you know, an audience is brought into it. They have their per the perception of they buy it, they've, they've loved it. Critics have their say. Does, the, does that impact on what you do with season two? Do you allow for any changes, or do you stick true to what you, your ambitions were initially? Well, it's interesting because everyone's a critic now, aren't they? Because of social media and everything, which is which is, is that a good thing to you? I, th I think it is a great thing that everyone's got an opinion and they can express their opinion. As to whether we, in terms of creating season two, took any notice of that? No, <laughs> because you can't. Because you know, there's there's already a group of people who are trying to work together on a on a common to achieve a common goal and go on a common journey together. And I think if you get too distracted by listening to too many people, then everything gets diluted. And actually, we, we had a clear idea of what we wanted to achieve. And season two is based on, uh, it's actually based on a newspaper article that, that I found about, uh, what should I say, an incident uh, uh, amongst a, a real kind of religious community in Canada. And it, 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 fi it really fitted with all of our collective view of what Tin Star is about. And so I think we, we all work together with Rowan to create a common vision. And while I'm interested and I can't, it's like picking a scab, you know, looking at the reviews and looking at, at, at social media, you have to kind of protect what you originally thought was the strongest and best idea. And while everyone's opinion is valuable, I think you can't be too pulled every which way because everyone has a different opinion. And I, I don't know what we'd end up with in the end. And what do you think that, what was that idea? Because it's interesting, because it's very difficult to kind of define what genre this fits into. It almost kind of, in some way, subverts any particular genre. Was that what made it interesting for you? Yeah. I think, I think it's about a lot of things. And on the one level, you can watch it as a kind of a conventional thriller, if you like. 
but actually it's about a lot of other things and, and I'm not interested in making things that are super conventional. I think it's more interesting, particularly if you have a cast of characters like this and the actors that we have and the writers that we have, it's good to be able to kind of try out new things and actually working with Sky Atlantic is amazing because they support your vision 100% and, and I think the show is stronger for that. I remember a quote from you saying from a previous interview, so you can't say you never said it because it's on the telly. I might, <laughs> I might have lied. You said that what you, particularly appeals to you about that is that you break every barrier. There are, you, there are no, there's, there's no way that you, that you don't go in the You mean in this? Society. Yeah, in the series. And is that, does that still appeal? Is that what the thrill yeah, was I'm, for you? I mean, uh, on a pure, just on a behavioural level, uh -huh. as far as my character's concerned. Um, yeah, his, his, his vocabulary is a bit mental. Um, he, are you allowed to say that nowadays? Um, what? Uh, but his, we were talking about this earlier, I mean, Jen, I mean, you come near my family, I'm going to, instead of having an argument with you, I'm going to shoot you. And that's his vocabulary, and that's the problem. And he's he's creating problems as he's as he's going along. So it's the way that he, the way that he acts out, in a sense, is his own worst nightmare. I mean, brings brings upon him his own worst nightmare. And his worst nightmare is losing them. There is nothing beyond uh, Jen's character and Ab's character for him. He's he's blinkered. Unfortunately, he is missing a chip as far as. Um, Civility is concerned, but I liked that. It, 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 I liked that it. Just when you thought you had it pinned down, that, that what the show was or, or who these people were, they changed on you. And I thought that the anarchy that the um, the anarchy of this family is is uh, addictive to me. I think it's rather wonderful. So I don't know if that makes any sense. It does indeed. But that's uh, what drew me. I mean, they killed off the, the little boy in, in episode one. I was like, oh, that keeps me interested. Now what's going to happen? You know, just when you thought it was that little family in the middle of nowhere, it wasn't. And that's the thing. You never know what's around the corner with this, and that's what's particularly exciting. Yeah. There's a lot of that in this season. But what's also really amazing, and which is really exciting to watch, is that we have this wealth of experience in terms of you guys as established um, Actors, but then we have young talent that shine through, like the, the characters of Whitey, and right. you're just amazing. I've got to say, this is a different level of performance. Do you, how much did you enjoy, and how much did you learn work, working with these guys? I loved it. All everyone was amazing. I mean, was it ever intimidating? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think so. Yeah, at the beginning. But I remember we did um, one episode that was. It kind of takes place. Basically, the whole episode is in one room, and like a little hallway. And um, because we had to do everyone's coverage, I got to spend a lot of time behind camera watching them. And that was amazing. Like how everyone works so differently and how they prepare really differently and interact with directors differently. And yeah, it was a huge pleasure. And Anna Maria and Janessa as well, who you saw in yeah. that. They were incredible. So yeah, I learned a lot. So you, John, what makes this a different experience in terms of the work that you've done and the way that they work? The length of it. <laughs> deep. That's it's deep, so John. deep, mate. <laughs> it's really deep. Pray I ask you to elaborate. Okay. It's just very long. <laughs> they paid you. Well, I was paid for The it. longer it I went on, the more it. money you made. It's the length of it, because it was long. Well, usually you can... Journals love people like you. Usually you can uh, hopscotch, you know, you can do two months and then you can go, you know. But this was six months. It was a big... A big endeavour, and because of that, uh, what came with it was a lot of uh, a lot of detail. We got to know each other really well. We got to rely on each other. We got to get, get take, you know get each other th each other through. We had to kind of find solutions. We had to find ways forward. Um, and six months is it's half a year. <laughs> it's gone, gone. I'm getting worse. Yeah. Half a year. <laughs> six months. Is... You're doing a great job, over there, John. <laughs> For half a year in Calgary, what was that like? Cold. <laughs> Apart from that, it was it was, it was it was cold and hot. It was minus thirty seven when we were shooting at, at times, and you can't you can only shoot to minus twenty seven because you know it's really cosy at minus twenty seven, and then so you can't film half the time, and the crew are having to work in the freezing cold, and then 
it's suddenly that that's what's weird about the weather there suddenly shift doesn't it mm. there's not like a, a gentle shift it's one day it's minus 37 oh hello in the morning it's plus 37 yeah you just walk out the door yeah. and you're wearing the wrong clothes yeah so that that's a challenge but i think there's a there's a curse and a benefit to being away in a small group you know being away from home for six months like john says you you have to rely on each other a lot mm. And in some ways, that intensity means that uh, it, it's very, very creative because you're all together and you talk about the work all the time. And equally, it's absolutely shattering. And it's hard to shake as well at the end. It's hard yeah. to forget. I mean, because you've spent a, a good part of the year yeah. Oh, yeah. pushing. In a state. You know, in a state. <laughs> And were, well, you, I were you embraced by the local community, or they just want you out of there after a while? Say again. Were you, were you embraced by the local communities? Oh no, they 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 love us being there. Yeah, they they really do. They, they it's great for them because we're saying this is a story shot in Canada, whereas normally people go to Canada and they pretend it's you know I don't know New York or mm, Washington, Washington or wherever it is. But because we were saying no, here we are in Canada. This is a Canadian story. There's loads of Canadian yeah. characters. We love it. They, would, they were so supportive, it was amazing, weren't they? Yeah, the, one of the hard, <coughs> hard things when we, go, when we went back this time um, was that the crew, who most of whom had worked on the first 99%, season, yeah. a lot of them hadn't seen it because they, they, it hadn't been um, uh, put out up there. So right. now, I think as of the end of the week, or when, whenever it goes, whenever they do it, they're having season one and season two in a block. So just for the lads, just for our guys um, and, girls. and girls. That's what I meant. So, sorry. <laughs> you tell him. It, no, it is. But it, they, 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 were, they worked so hard for us, didn't they? Yeah, with yeah. Us. They're, they're, they're very loyal. Yeah, and they're very Canadian. What? what does that mean? <laughs> very nice. <laughs> did you guys have gun training? <laughs> and did someone get shot? What, me? I'm asking. No, she did. She had some gun training, right? You, yeah. Didn't you go down the range? Training. We all yeah. gun training. Yeah. yeah, the first time we went out. I never, I, I didn't need it. Because <laughs> you're so butch. I'm so butch, yeah. yeah. In, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a modern way. kind of way. In a modern no, sense. No, in a non-male <laughs> way. Leave it now. Yeah. Let it go, let it go, John. Just walk away. <laughs> so, what was that like? Not for you, because you didn't, no, you didn't, didn't have one. No, I didn't do it. Yeah. It, it was weird. It's very strange, the gun thing. Um, yeah, I, I understood. I, I, rem I remember doing the training. Uh, this was the first time around. Where's Ollie? He's over Where there. Is he? Ollie and I did it is together. He didn't Ollie get shot. Ollie and I did it together, <laughs> and we. Um, I, I really understood the. I don't know, addiction to it. I was like, once you fire the gun, there's a great. I, I underestimated the power that actually is in the shot and kind of how that uh, affects you, you physically, like just just your, your cells. And I was like, oh, that's why they love them. <laughs> you know, like there's, there's, a, there's a physical reaction to shooting a gun that I had underestimated. It does, you do seem to be in your element when you've got a big pistol in your hand. <laughs> 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 Great fun. <laughs> Great fun. <laughs> On a slightly serious note, um, in what, in, in terms of playing an alcoholic, how challenging is it, and how much do you have to work get through? Get drunk. Yeah. You have to get <laughs> drunk quite a lot. Um, uh, no, I mean I I I drink too much, um, so it was, that's th th there's that element of it. Um, my dad was an alcoholic, so there's that element of it, and there were people that were working with us that um, you know were dealing with that too, and so. Um, it it was the only the only other the other side of that would be what I liked doing was no drunk acting at all. All of that's gone. That's way behind him. So it's like he's drinking water. Water. But then in season one, the man changes. He just becomes a different person, and that's what we that's what we toyed with. But in season two, the decision in his, somewhere in his mind has been made to be just one of them. And that, uh, that's what we played around with on this one. So, so as far as that's, 
you know, you can do some research, but really it's just a choice that you make about um, what kind of drunk you want him to be. And it was really about what, what he, what the man that he became when he just crossed that threshold. And we talked about that a lot. And yeah. how important was it, uh, how, what did it allow for you then, Alison, in terms of allow, making him a blackout drunk, that he didn't remember things, we didn't know whether it was real, all that, in terms of what it allowed you to do with the series? And the it's, it's less apparent in season two. Season two, the decision's been made to be one. Just to be drunk, frankly. To be Jack, yeah. To be Jack in season two. And in season one, it's a, I think it just allows you inside that central character's head more. Um, it was confusing though was uh, confusing. in season one we had because a rule, didn't we? yeah we had to have a rule. Okay, what does he know? You know, and <laughs> and 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 you had to kind of abide by that rule. You couldn't mm. really blur blur it. So he was when he woke up, wherever he woke up, he didn't know how he got there. I think what it, what it did allow us to do actually in season one uh, um, was in a couple of the episodes we played with time a lot. So we were letting the audience remember things. We were, so I think it was episode th th three of season one. We we told the story almost backwards. That was the one where you were on the on the down with with Ollie. Mm. And actually, we 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 the audience were remembering as you were starting to remember. So it did it did allow a kind of um, being a bit more experimental in terms of the structure of the narrative. But I think what 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 we always try to do with Tinsel anyway is play with the structure of the narrative and not necessarily always be conventional. So, for example, you know, in season one, episode nine was ten years previously and we didn't kind of make a big deal of that. It just was ten years previously. And then in season two, episodes four and five are the same story but told from two different characters' perspective. So you see it in a completely different way. Um, so I, thi I think it, it, it is, as a series, something we just play with form anyway. And that's one of the, bit of the fun of it, I think. Yeah. I'm going to open to the audience soon. So if you want to ask a question, will you make yourselves known? Uh, I don't... I on, the, on, the, on, on the sort of famously director type people versus the not so, more, not so famously types, I don't make any distinction. They're either good at, at, at what they do or they're not. And, and um, there were people that I worked with on this that um, that were brilliant at, at what, they were, what they were doing. It rec it, it's a it's a it's a tough old job, and they were they did. I think some of them are here. Yeah, I think some of them are here, and so they're great. And and then on the on the we on the directing front, it did crop up. Don't do that. Uh, Don't tease like that. No, I'm actually at the moment because m my guys are th pretty much through through college now. Um, I am going to. I am looking actively for um, a project to direct, and um, I have three possible movies: two scripted and one not. And then I have a television series that I want to produce as well so which I may or may not act in but it's an idea that I a concept that I came up with so I'm kind of jumping around all over the place with that but that's where I'm at with it at, as of you know 25 minutes ago do one of those projects have a, a special name attached to them in what in what sense written by yeah <laughs> I do I do <laughs> but again I don't know if the, if it's just been yeah, I have a King Lear that um, Pinter adapted for me um, when we were working, just when we followed, uh, fo uh, finished Fulished. doing... Followed, interesting, right? <laughs> um, speaking of Shakespeare. <laughs> um, uh, when we were finished, we finished up with the war zone, so it's been sitting there getting ready to do. So I might just dip into that, but I don't know. I, I, I came up with an idea the other day that I rather like, so... Very important. <laughs> I mean, it's the humour that allows you to go to the dark places. Because if it's just dark, life is tough enough, let's face it, at the moment. So I think, you, you know, you, what you do, well, what I don't want to do is go home <coughs> and watch telly that I feel is worth, worthy or hard work or a challenge. I want to go and be really entertained and moved and have a bit of a laugh. And I think that's what we strive to do. You would know best than I if we achieve it. But I think... 
we always try to leave room to play a little bit on set to inject more as much humor as we possibly can and i th i think that's where tin star is absolutely at its best where we might be doing something really dark or sad or difficult or emotional but then it's undercut by a bit of humor or comedy of some sort that, that's that's my hope and that's what i hope is the tone of the show really it's very hard because, I mean, it was particularly hard for Genevieve and Christina when they were filmed, but just in terms of, you know, the boring practicalities, just getting a unit, and the, and the units in Canada are massive, up a mountain is... In that temperature. It, it's mm. unreal, you know, and, and at the top of the mountain, so we'd, you, you would get to the bottom of the mountain, then you'd be able to drive a little way in your car, then you'd get out, and then they'd take you in a four by four a bit further, and then you'd get out, and then they'd have like these sort of golf cart things, and you'd go a bit further. <coughs> and then it was walking. And when the snow's up to here, it's, it's knackering. But for you, I, I mean, I was just stood there, but for you, <laughs> it was spectacular. And you, well, all of you, actually. No, but you had that you one where you were in a you? hole. A little right? bit. Tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a wimp, though. Any other moment thinking, my God, why am I doing this? <laughs> it was really cold. <laughs> it was really cold. Like, I remember one day, that, uh, actually, it, it kind of is nothing in that, but there was me and Christina, and we were, you know that bit after I find the phone or whatever? I couldn't pick the phone up. I was like, because she wasn't wearing gloves, and I was, and, 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 and anyway, then we were doing this scene, and, we had been, that was one of the days where we had to start late because it was so mm, cold. cold. And so we had to wait for the temperature to warm up to a certain point before we could film. So the crew was on stand down and we were waiting. Then you kind of run out there because you only have a certain amount of daylight as well, right? So you have to get a shot. So we were out there and we set up the shots and, we're, and we organized it all in there say, and action and blah, 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 blah. And you're off there and you're chatting away. And then halfway through, the See, I felt my jaw kind of, <laughs> and then I started talking like this, and Christina just went, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't talk. And then Gilles just went, and cut! And then we all went, and go back to the barn and get warm. Yeah. Like, it was, oh, it was so really cold. cold. And then that sequence in the, in the snow, like, in the lying down in the snow, that was yeah. stupid cold. <laughs> But then you just had to do a lot of running in the heat, didn't you? Oh, that's yeah. why I ran up and down a hill. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, well lot, done, mate. Yeah. In the plus 30 degrees. <laughs> the big degrees. ball of dung in front of me. Yes. <laughs> like a dung beetle for about a day. Yeah. <laughs> they called it, the crew called it the John Lynch Hill. Yeah. And then they all spat on it. <laughs> <laughs> you had fun then. Yeah, I know. That was in the heat. I don't know. I guess... <laughs> It all happens so quickly, like the first season's over two weeks, and then I think the second season is the same. It's like a very short period of time, so I don't know if Anna's really dealing with it consciously. It's always there. We were talking about this earlier, how the death of PT is not like explicitly discussed a lot in season two, but it is always, it's there all the time. We and do bring um, him up a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. we do, sorry. And you try to kill yourself. And, uh, yeah. No, yeah, no, I know all that. But I think <laughs> as the season keeps going, and we don't oh no, so it. messed up. Um, as the season keeps going, I, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think she's, I think she's in shock the whole time for most of it. And um, what kind of woman does she become? Oh, I think by the end, she's someone who wants to be able to stand on her own two feet and fight, kind of like her parents. And um, yeah, she wants to help this family who have been so kind to her and given her so much and she can see that they're, they're in trouble. <laughs> and, yeah. um, I'm staying off it. Uh, yeah, and, but they need help and she knows where she can get it. So yeah, I think she's someone who wants to be able to be a bit like these two. In a way, the two she's desperately trying to get away but from. But also, yeah, <laughs> it's not confusing. <laughs> That'd be a yes, <laughs> <laughs> right? I would say. I mean, we know more about who we are. Hopefully. In this season. <laughs> I mean, we haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully. Yeah. Looking forward no, to you, it. You, you, you do find out more. Yeah. 
not everything is answered, but some questions okay. are. Get in there. Yep. Get in there. <laughs> Before I forget to tell you, the series starts on 24th of January, so put that in your um, phones and memory banks, on Sky Atlantic and Now TV. I want to ask you to join me in thanking the amazing cast and the executive producers.